Oh, so this is where my mini came from. It's right here. H&R AgriPower. We're going to go in here. They've got me my new bucket, my 36-inch bucket. It came in today, one week after they ordered for me. How is cool is that? I'll jump over and get that. Y'all look at that right there. You know you're gonna be on film, don't you? I am just playing with you, man. I ain't gonna. You... I've been watching you film. Oh, have you? Yes, you well, good. You need to. I'm telling you, service first up here. I mean, he's even moving stuff out of the back of my truck, out of the way. We're gonna see how good you are on that forklift, man. All right? Just tell me rid of quick I understand. That thing's a hoss. Get you one more bite on it there. Go a little bit further and we'll call her done. There you go. All right, right there. Oh, heck yeah, I'm gonna close my tailgate. Look at you, man. That ain't your first radio, is it? Appreciate it, man. So there they are, sitting side by side. That three-footer's a good bit larger than that two-footer is. A lot of size difference between them. At the same depth. Gonna hold a lot more dirt right there. I kinda got some thoughts. I'm not gonna share the thoughts with y'all that I've got on a three foot compared to the two foot because I want to run it to see if it confirms my thoughts or not on what my uh, what my thoughts are right there. The uh, This has got the same teeth on it, on both of them. 156 and 156 on it right there exact same style teeth which is cool so uh you got five that's got six okay very good very good so all right i'm gonna get this band off of it right here real quick and i'm gonna put it on i'm gonna put the put the uh take the two foot off put the three foot on there and we'll play with it so the uh kubota is going through a region right now i'm actually timing it that's what it looks like on the dash right there when it does it it goes to a uh basically runs wide open right there while it's doing it well actually not quite wide open it's like three quarter here that's wide open right there let's go take this two foot bucket off real quick we'll put the three on there i gotta cut that band too so all you do is just pull this pin out right here it's got a clip on that side, pull it out. Let's see here. Let's lay it right there. Okay. You just curl the bucket. Uh, let's go cut this band right quick. Cut, man. She's cut. So I'm timing the region on it. On my tractor, it takes about 30 minutes. And uh, we'll see how long it takes. It's just like that, it's all simple. We'll put this one on it now. All right, it took 13 minutes, actually just under 13 minutes to do the region on it. So that was pretty cool very cool very very cool there so i got the bucket on it right there right now and uh i'm gonna mess with it here a little bit i got a hunter here he's cutting the grass today first time of the season uh march what's the day march 29th so i've been moving everything i think he thought he was gonna get to mow around all this stuff but uh, i got here when he got started so i've been moving everything around we're gonna move move the old ford right here What's well, that truck right here, man? It's just bad to the bone. I mean, it just cranks. 
Listen to that, boy. That's what I'm talking about. Let her build up some air. Get her air built up, and then I'm gonna move her out of the way before he can mow this area right here. All right, let me show y'all what we got going on here. I uh, got Tater out, he's out and about. The two or three people that each video worry about me, you know, hitting Tater or something like that with the machine, you ain't gotta worry about that. And he ain't gonna, he, you, couldn't, you couldn't hit that dog if you had to as fast as he is. What I'm gonna be doing is, is uh, I'm going back over here where the blowdowns are. I've already got the Mini over here. It's sitting over there. So we're gonna be running the Mini with the new three foot bucket on it. Uh, the chainsaw of choice today is going to be the 550 XP Mark II. I've got a brand new full chisel uh, chain on it right here. It hadn't been sharpened or anything. It's brand new straight out of the pack. I put it on there last night. It's not an X-cut chain. They are sending me an X-cut chain to run on it. So I'm going to be running in some three-year-old blowdown stuff. So it's not, I mean, it's still pretty solid, but I mean, it's, it's you know, it's a little bit... Some people call it punky, I call it doty, or you know, stuff like that. And here comes some freaking rain. You got to be kidding me. We're gonna go over here and uh we're gonna be working with all that. I'm playing with a three foot bucket and and uh so y'all hang tight. So this is a 20 inch bar I um on this saw I'm gonna be running. I don't wear earmuffs, I wear earplugs is what I wear. So, they're a lot better than earmuffs I ever thought about being. But I love this helmet right here with the flip down visor on it. Love it, love it, love it. We're gonna cut that thing up right there. And see how it pulls that full chisel on that 20 inch bar. I bet it won't have any problem though.
All right, so no problem pulling that chain. All right, here we go. We're gonna make some big cuts on it here. Up through here. It's pulling like I'm normally accustomed, accustomed to a chain pulling. Put that full chisel on it right there. Much better. I mean, cut good with the kind of the, the H25 there, but this is a lot better. I'm gonna jump on the mini right quick and move some of this stuff out of my way. One of the biggest things that gets people in trouble with chainsaws is is getting tangled up in stuff like this right here. Especially on cutting timber, not having an escape route. You can get hurt quicker in this stupid hedge bush and your money had to to keep things moved out of your way. You know what I mean? So that's what I'm about to do. Tater just caught something right there. I'm not sure what he just got, but he just caught something. I'm not sure if it's a snake or... Well, but anyhow, I'm gonna move this stuff out of the way to kind of clean it up for him here right quick.
Y'all check this out. Cut a snake in half. Look at it right there. Y'all see that snake? That snake was in that hollow of that uh of that log right there. And uh he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Cut him. Cut him with a saw. Didn't even know it, man. Didn't even know it. That's just a big old chicken snake is all it is. Alright, I'm about to fuel this thing on camera. I'm going to show you all the hours it's got on. I have not put any fuel in it yet. I don't know if you can see that or not right there. It's, uh... Hang on. Let me do this. Now you can see it. That polarizer filter had a mess up. 19.4 hours and you can see the fuel level right there. It's just under a quarter of a tank, looks like. I was scared to run it anymore without you know just kind of knowing the machine but i was surprised at how long it has it's ran on a tank of fuel and last saturday saturday i ran it eight hours and i ran it hard too i mean well i actually ran it over eight hours but we're gonna fuel it because this thing is getting i'm gonna let y'all watch because i don't know how this is gonna work because it's got a thing here you push and it does a tone and lets you know when it's about to get full. So we're gonna we're gonna check this out together. All right, I got the pump running here. That's the first one of them things I've ever uh, dealt with. Thank goodness none of that fuel came back out on my, on my camera. So as you can tell, that's the first time I fueled it up because I wasn't expecting that. This thing's got a strainer down there in it. And uh, I had that nozzle bottomed out against it. And when I hit it, man, it sprayed it back out. But I don't think it got any on the camera at all. That's pretty slick right there though. I like that. Very, very cool. Alright, so 19.4 hours. I'm not sure how much longer I might have could have ran on that thing. But I didn't want to run it out. So I just kind of err on the safe side of caution there. Went ahead and then uh and filled filled it up. So I'm gonna wrap this video up here real quick. Uh, I really like the three foot bucket that's on the machine. The only thing is with this bucket on here, the tines on the on the thumb here laying right on top 
I mean, right dead on them on both uh, teeth right here. Moving these tines is not an option. It's not going to happen. I'm not going to do that uh, because all this is comes back in there. I'm not going to do that. So my only option, if I wanted to go all the way down, which it doesn't hurt anything with it touching on the with it touching on the uh, teeth right there, would be move the shanks. Well, if I move the shanks it's going to throw my spacing off so i'm going to leave it just just like it is is what i'm going to do because i'm going to be the only one running it and everything like that but uh i didn't dig any with it much yesterday uh mainly moved a bunch of bunch of brush with it is the main thing that i did but uh so i've got a uh, i've got a phone mount here that i'm going to be installing on it here in a little bit that i'm going to be filming this and i've also got to weld some uh I'm going to weld some attachment points on the backs of these buckets. I'm going to plate it and fix it where I put a clevis or a shackle and a pin in it right there. So I'm going to do that on both buckets. The first thing I'm going to do today, though, when I come out here, probably after lunch, you see this ball right here, too, and five, five sixteenths ball. I'm actually going to come off of this and come up, and I'm going to put this ball right there on top of that i'm gonna fix a plate and i'm gonna gust it up real good and i'm gonna film all that when i do it that way i can back right up under my gooseneck and catch it uh i've had some other things from my other tractor that was a it was a bell spear that had a ball on top of it you grab that gooseneck and i uh, go with it and uh i've got the other thing too is i've got a full set of replacement lights for my gooseneck LEDs, reds, and the small ones, the two inch ones, yellow and red, both. I'm going to be swapping all of them out. They still got the old uh, incandescent bulbs on them. So we're going to be replacing them with, uh, with all of these on that, on that gooseneck. So I'm going to film it. But uh, I just wanted to come in here and grab this camera. This video is going to be bad late today. It is what it is. Uh, just a little sneak peek. Look at that monster Wilton right there. That thing's, uh, we'll get more into details on that. That's a beast right there, boy. Just kind of give you an idea of the scale of it. So right at a foot tall. Of course, this opens some. Let's see here. From the end, you know, you're looking about like that right there that's a big one right there and for those of y'all who have, have, have not seen uh, my anvil and there's a good story behind this dude too there's a story behind that vice too i'll get in it also uh this anvil the top of this anvil is over five inches wide it's uh almost three foot long it's over 14 inches tall the base of it is uh 14 by 13 that's a monster right there so there we go i'm gonna go in and get this video ready right quick i'm not sure what was gonna be in front of this i have no idea uh we shall see we shall see but uh appreciate all y'all watching show do we'll catch y'all later later titers